Hey friends, welcome back to Belle's Library. Today I am doing the bookish A to Z hot or not challenge. Did I do it? Bookish A to Z hot or not challenge. Tag. I was so close. Okay, start over. Hey friends, welcome back to Belle's Library. Today I am doing the bookish A to Z hot or not tag. I got it. Okay. This was created by another bibliophile reads and I was actually tagged in this tag twice three months ago. <laughs> but there's this little place in your section, like your comment section that says mentions. And if you click on that, you can see all the people who have tagged you in videos. Yeah, I know that. I've been on YouTube for 10 years. I should probably have figured that out by now. But thank you to whoever pointed that out to me. I found out that I have been tagged by Nicole at Noteworthy Fiction and Farah at Bookstalgic, which are two of my favorite booktubers. So I'm excited to do this tag super late. <laughs> if you listen to this tag and think it might be something you want to do, feel free to consider yourself tagged. I will find some people to tag here at the end and I will put them in the description box. But if you want to do this, do it. All right, the prompts for this bookish A to Z hot or not tag. Uh, basically, there is a prompt for every letter of the alphabet and we are just supposed to, I guess, say whatever comes to mind with that word uh, that has to do with reading, okay? At least that's how I'm gonna do this one. All right, so the first one is A for audiobooks. Now for me, I have just kind of started listening to audiobooks in the last year or so. Um, they never were something that I was really into before just because I had no way to listen to them. So I'm stay at home mom and don't really go anywhere very often. And if I do, it's just within a couple of miles of my house. So I couldn't really listen to them in the car or anything like that. I don't have like a commute or whatever. And then in my home, I've got 400 million zillion children and I homeschool. And so I don't have a quiet house ever to listen to an audiobook then. And if I were to put earbuds in my head, then I would miss all of the crazy things that my kids are up to. And so I have to be, you know, sort of aware. <laughs> so I haven't really listened to audiobooks in the past. However, lately I have got a chance to listen to a couple. Um, when I went on my trip to Arizona, I listened to a couple while my daughter was off hanging out with her boyfriend, I would drive around and go to Little Free Libraries. If you guys haven't seen that video, I made a video about all of that. And so I listened to my audiobooks then. And then also, um, I just got one off of Libby. I've talked about that in a video that I put up last week where I was super grumpy. Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, it was the Moby Dick thing that I listened to on Libby. And that I just put in and listened to as I was driving around and doing errands and things over the last month or so. So yeah, all that to say, I think audiobooks are a good choice for me lately because my kids are older and they're kind of doing their own thing when we're not schooling. And um, I've been sewing a lot for my Etsy shop or whatever, and I can just put in earbuds and listen to audiobooks while I'm sewing. However, I usually get really distracted with everyone else's um you know, booktube videos. And that's what I listen to while I'm sewing instead. So anyway, that was a really long, I won't go that long on all of these or we'll be here for a year. All right. Next one, Bildungsroman. Bildungsroman. That is a word I had to look up. Had never heard of that before. It means in literary criticism, a Bildungsroman is a literary genre that focuses on the psychological and moral growth of the protagonist from childhood to adulthood in which character change is important. So basically it's like a, maybe a coming of age or maybe more like a, you know, following somebody's life from childhood to adulthood. And uh, so I don't know, like Little House on the Prairie series maybe would be considered that. Um, when I think of these, I think that that sounds kind of dull. But then when I think of examples, I there the examples I think of are ones that I enjoyed, like Great Expectations. I think that could be considered one of these buildings, Romans, building, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, and so I loved Great Expectations. That's one of my favorite stories. So maybe I do like these um, if they are, you know, interesting. <laughs> so that one's, that one's a maybe. I guess I'm supposed to say hot or not, but you know, anyway, you're getting it, okay. Children's books, that's, that is letter C. So children's books, I don't know. I like to read them for nostalgia. And every now and then I might pick one up if it looks really cute. I talk talked in an earlier video about this series by Anna James, the pages and company and the kids like kind of travel in and out of books. It's cute. 
but I couldn't read like over and over and over again. Like I couldn't read more than one children's book at a time, unless I'm reading it with my children. So I read with my kids all the time. We have several different um, chapter books going right now with one kid I am reading through. Um, it's called Our Island Story and it's like a history of England. And then with another, and we're also reading through Little Women, me and this daughter are. And then with my son, we are reading through Robinson Crusoe. With another daughter, we have been reading through the Babysitter's Club series. Actually, with two of my daughters, I've been reading through the Babysitter's Club series. And then I'm also rereading for the who knows how many billionth time uh, Little House on the Prairie series with one of my daughters. And so I like reading children's books if I'm reading with my kids or to my kids. Um, but I don't necessarily you know, get really excited when I pick them up or find them. Um, but sometimes, like I said, I'll read things for nostalgia, like Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. That was one that I read as a kid that I have reread as an adult. Um, the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil Lee Frankweiler by E.L. Konigsberg. Um, that's one that, ooh, that I read as a kid and that I really liked. So, you know, just depends. All right, D for digital. I do not like reading digital anything at all, no. Um... E, experimental. I'm thinking that that means that, like, the person is experimenting with a genre that's new to them or that's weird and new to all of us. <laughs> I don't think I would like that, but I don't know. Um, F for fantasy. So, I don't like fantasy stories at all, but I am going to challenge myself in the next year or two and at least read through um, the Lord of the Rings series and the Narnia series, which I actually think I'm going to like, but, um, uh, overall, I do not think that I like fantasy. I did not like, um, like the never ending story. I've tried to read that. I did not like that. I couldn't ever get through that one. I can't get through like, um, the most horrible book that I think I've ever read that I thought I would love was the princess bride. I love the movie so much, but the book, no. All right, G, graphic novels. I don't really like graphic novels. Um, they kind of fit in the category that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. <laughs> I don't I don't enjoy them at all. Um, H for horror, no. I do not read anything horror at all. When I was a kid, like a way too young to be reading this kid, I was like eight, nine. I read a ton of Stephen King. I didn't really get all of it, but I got enough to be completely freaked out. And that was the last time I read horror. <laughs> um, and I and now it's just, I don't think I would be as freaked out as just, it's just not something that I really want to put in my head. Um, inspirational. Oh, I don't really want to talk about this. Okay. When I think inspirational, I think Christian fiction. That's just what comes to mind. And I can't stand Christian fiction. Now I am a Christian and I appreciate that there are people out there writing books that are intended to glorify God. But I think inspirational fiction is, for the most part, really preachy and contrived. I can get through biblical fiction good if we're telling the story of things that happened biblically, so it's more like a historical fiction. But if we're just talking about a girl who, you know, had this normal things, whatever, a mystery or whatever it is, Victorian, whatever, historical fiction, some kind of a thing like that, and we're just inserting Jesus in the Bible and now, and you know, she's nice and then somebody gets saved and somebody you know, stops drinking or whatever. Like it's all seems so contrived and so preachy. I can't stand Christian fiction. And because I am a Christian, a lot of people ask me, what are your favorite stories? And I'm like, none of them. <laughs> Don't read them. Just go read the Bible if you want to read stuff about God. I can't stand inspirational fiction. All right, Jay, for journalism, is this like, do I like reading newspapers or do I like reading books about journalism, journalists? I was a journalist and a newspaper editor for a little bit. Um, I don't know that I'd like reading about them and I don't really like reading the news. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe that's a not for me. All right. Kitsch. K for kitsch. Kitschy. Kitsch, kitschy. I can't say that word, you know, in the right way. So I just say that. I don't know that I can say that word in the right way. <laughs> so here's a definition for you. I had to kind of look this up because when I think of kitschy, I think it's one of those like false cognate things where I think of kitchen and my kitchen is kind of kitschy because I have a lot of like just little cutesy things in there. So it's kind of a word that means sort of like cutesy. Um, this is what I found 
relating to literature. It says, the beginning of the 20th century defined kitsch as a term referring to productions within popular culture that showed a lack of depth and thought. So, um, words that I associate when I you know, think about kitschy, like in, in reading, I think of something cutesy, something that I can kind of like check out on, something that might not necessarily by, be naive, but it's just kind of like inspirational Christian fiction. <laughs> I don't know. Just like a, you know, like a beach read or something, but not even, but, but even kind of worse than that. Just a beach read that was like so sappy. And like when I think of romance, all of them go in this kitschy category. It's a definite, it's a definite not for me when it comes to books. When it comes to kitchen decorations, yes. <laughs> but for books, this whole just, blah, if I'm not, I really think that these are going to depend on the person and what they enjoy. For me, this is, like I said, the perfect word for a lot of that inspirational fiction that I come across. Um, and even graphic novels, I'm sorry, I guess maybe I just haven't come across a good one, but it just, it seems like an easy way uh, to avoid thinking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said that. It seems like a waste of time to me. If I'm not learning, and maybe this makes me sound like a book snob. I'm okay with that. <laughs> if I'm not learning something or I'm not inspired to go learn something from what I've read, I feel like I wasted my time. So I'm not one of those people that just reads to check out on things. If I find myself checking out, I get frustrated. And that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of frustrated with my choice for March of the Mammoth, but it's my own fault. I chose something that I already know a ton about. I chose something that I've already been learning about and researching for a good 15, 18 years. And so it's not really new information to me, so I'm getting bored with it, right? So that is that whole genre, that whole term for me, kitschy. If I'm going to get bored with it and I'm going to check out, I don't want to read it. And I know that a lot of people actually use reading so they can check out. <laughs> um, so that's totally understandable and fine. That's just not what I use it for. So yeah, that's a not for me. Okay, library. Um, you know, the other two people who did this did it in 14 minutes. I don't know how they did it in 14 minutes. This video is not going to be 14 minutes. Okay, library. <laughs> I don't use my local libraries. This is another little bit of a rant, but, um, one, every time I go check out library books, I just don't read them. And I think it's because I have this, okay? I've talked about this in previous videos. This, these two shelves right here are five and five. So there's 10 of these little rectangular blockies and they're all full of books I have not read yet that I have picked up from all over the place, right? I either bought them or was given them or I found them in a little free library or something, but it's basically my TBR shelves. And so I have no need to go to the library at the moment. And what I find is I'll get this big stack of books that looked good, but then I will not read them because I'm reading from my TBR shelf. So um, maybe I will, and I have used the library a lot in the past, and maybe I will in the future, but for now, um, I, I don't really use it. And my libraries, the one in my town, I have refused to ever go into again unless I'm shopping at their shop because they're so loud. <laughs> and I want them to bring back the mean old librarians that used to shush you all the time. Tell you, you have to be quiet because you're in the library. People are studying. People are reading. People are learning. I miss that. I don't like that libraries are these community centers now. And I know that actually that's probably what they were back in the day. And were these community hangouts, right? But um, I'm not loving it. So anyway, I don't go to the library very much. All right, M, mystery. I like a mystery as a subplot or if it's just really good, okay? So like, for, but my definition of really good might be funky because like my definition of really good mystery is something like Wilkie Collins, Woman in White. <laughs> And it's a really good mystery, <laughs> even though you know everything that's going to happen. Oh, uh, maybe, I don't know. I think maybe I like seeing how it's all going to play out. I don't like murder mysteries unless they're like those ones. Okay, this is my kitschy spot. I changed my mind. Maybe I do like kitsch for just one thing. And that is like cozy mysteries about like a bakery or like somebody who's cooking or like a bookshop or something like there's this um author is it tamar myers tamar somebody 
I'll find her and put her up here somewhere for you. Um, she wrote, and I don't know if she still does, but there was a series on, um, like, it was like Amish murder mysteries. And I think she's like a former Amish or has Amish people in her family or whatever. Is <laughs> They are so stinking funny. At least they were about 10 or 12 years ago. Maybe they're not so much anymore. Maybe I shouldn't recommend them until I reread. But I remember them being really funny and I really did like those. So that kind of mystery I like. I don't like something that's super serious, although I do like things like Brad Meltzer or even like Dan Brown. <laughs> so I don't know. Are those mysteries? Are they more like political thrillers? Are they more like ridiculous craziness? I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about mysteries. But I do know that I've had a struggle getting through Agatha Christie. I love watching them. I love watching mysteries. British mysteries, I could watch them. I just eat them up. But, um, reading them? I don't know. Okay, in nonfiction. Yes, this is my favorite everything. I love nonfiction. I love learning about things, whether it's biographies or memoirs, travel stories, um, historical, you know, whatever's studies on this and that. I like, like I said, uh, I like reading about people who have, you know, done cool stuff, or invented things, homesteaders, I like reading cookbooks. <laughs> I like nonfiction. Okay, O. O is for Omnibus. Now, Omnibus is like a anthology of an author's works, usually like all related to the same like general subject. So like everything Charles Dickens had to say about labor, you know, the needs for labor reform or something in the Victorian era or whatever. Yeah, they put them all together in an Omnibus, okay? And that you just read everything that this author had to say about that. So I haven't really even read a lot of those. Um, the closest thing I've read to that is like a compilation of stories by the same author. So something like um, Eudora Welty or um, Nathaniel Hawthorne or I'm still in the middle of the Elizabeth Gaskell one. <sighs> there are gothic stories that I'm still not enjoying. Although I did like um, Lois the Witch. So, um, compilations, maybe I might like those, but actually this actual definition, I don't think I've actually even read one. All right, poetry. I do not like to read poetry. I am currently going through a book of Emily Bronte's poems that my husband bought for me as a gift, and I am actually loving that. But for the most part, I don't seek out to read poetry, and I don't, in the past, have never really liked reading poetry. But I love Emily Bronte, so I would literally read, like, her shampoo bottle because I really like her. So um, after I get done with this, then, you know, maybe I'll find another one. Um, oh, I guess I did like the the Tennyson um, Idols of the King, right? Is that what I'm thinking of? Where we're talking about King Arthur. Um, I read some of that with one of my daughters a couple years ago, and I did like those. So... I guess it just depends on what the poetry is about. I don't like love poetry. I don't like romance anything, but I guess we're not to R yet. Okay, quest. So, like I said, Lord of the Rings, that is on my um, list here. Other quests, I don't know that I've really read one other than, um, I mean, The Princess Bride kind of has some questing in it. <laughs> I like reading King Arthur, I guess. Stuff about King Arthur's quests. Um... I don't know. I guess I haven't read a whole lot lately, at least in the last, you know, couple of decades of my life. Romance. I don't like reading romance. I don't even like it as a subplot. Don't, I don't even want, nobody falls in love. Nobody gets to love in my world. <laughs> just be who you are. Either already be in a relationship and don't talk about it too much or just be single. Like, I don't want to read about your romance. <laughs> okay. I got my own love story. I don't want to read yours. Okay. Science fiction. Um, S is science. Okay. S is science fiction. Now I have always said that I'm not a sci-fi person at all. However, I said that and my husband's like, Oh, you should watch Stargate SG one. <laughs> so 20 years ago, probably we started watching Stargate SG one and I love it. Like that whole world is a real world somewhere. And those people are real and everything that has happened to them is real. I am so obsessed with Stargate SG-1. It's not even funny. So then I was like, okay, I'm not a sci-fi person, but I do like Stargate SG-1. So that one is just an exception. But then I started watching Doctor Who and then I was like, oh my goodness, Doctor I love everything about Doctor Who. I am the biggest Whovian out there. I love Doctor Who. Everything about Doctor Who. 
well, up until you get to like halfway through Capaldi. And then, oh, honestly, up until you get to the girl. I just didn't like those episodes. I didn't even really like Capaldi all that much anyway. Okay, I love 10 and 11, and I love 9. I do. All right, anyway, moving on. Not a sign. I don't think that I like science fiction. I do not think that I would like to read it. What I don't like about science fiction is I don't like reading about things that don't exist, like beasts that don't exist or, you know, beings that don't exist, um, like fake pretend fictional beings. So that's hard for me because when I read, I imagine it. And I'll, oftentimes I imagine it like happening to me <laughs> and that it's real. Um, and so I can't imagine that that's real because it's not real. And so I just struggle with liking it because I can't get into the story because these things aren't real. And so I can't sort of like get myself to imagine that they are. Uh, T, translated. I have only read a few translated things, um, like modern things, and did not enjoy them. Things that were translated, like, back in the day, like, for instance, Around the World in 80 Days, that's translated. I totally love that story. Um, so it really, I guess, maybe depends on the translation, but I think it would just have to be a really great story to begin with. And so I think that a lot of things, I think I've probably read more translated works than I realized, but I just didn't at the time understand that they were translated, if that makes sense. Um, but I most recently read Days of the Morisaki Bookshop by, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. And I didn't enjoy it at all. But I think, honestly, that it probably wasn't good in the original Japanese either. So I have a video on that. That's in my grumpy video, again, if you want to be exposed to that grumpy side of me. You can watch my February wrap up because <laughs> everything I read in February was horrible. Okay, you. This word is Ubermensch and it means superhuman. And so Nietzsche talked a little bit about this, actually a lot about this. Actually, I think the whole thing was this idea. And he said God is dead and that we are the gods now, basically. So whether or not he really believed this or he was just kind of like trying to get people to start thinking outside the box a little bit about religion and such, or even about themselves, philosophical things, whatever, I don't really know. But no, I'm not into that at all. Uh, I have no interest in pursuing this thought. Like, I'm perfectly fine to serve the one true God, Yahweh, and I have no interest in being a God or reading about people who want to be one. All right. V, Victorian. Yes. <laughs> I love Victorian works. Fiction and nonfiction. I love reading about the time period. I love reading about everything that they did. It's one of those things that I'm kind of saturated in, so I really had to kind of pull out of a couple of years ago because I was just kind of like I am with this book on London. Did I, t did I talk about that in this video? Maybe not. Um, it's one of those things that I've kind of like saturated my knowledge on for this time. And I'm sure I really haven't, but reading about the Victorians and their lives and um, just 19th century people in America as well, which I kind of lump in and call them all Victorians. I just love it. Love it so much, but I've read so much um, nonfiction in that area that I've sort of pulled away a little bit just to kind of learn about some other stuff. But I still love to read the fiction. That's my favorite time period as far as fiction goes. And I have read tons and there's a zillions more left to read. I know. Um, there is a bookshop local to me that gets a lot of old like antique books in and she sells them for super cheap. And so it's like all these stories that Victorians were reading, right? It was like their, their kitschy <laughs> books are there just sort of like, you know, read it, but it's not really a, you know, something you're going to keep forever. And you're still going to trade it with your friends and whatever. It's just like their stuff. Like they're just regular old women's fiction or whatever. Um, she gets a lot of that kind of stuff. So stuff that, you know, you haven't heard of, nobody would call it a classic or whatever, but um, I enjoy them. So I would call them classics <laughs> and they're just fun old stories um, set in Victorian times and written in Victorian times. All right. W is Westerns. I don't know if I've ever read a Western in my life. I have no desire to read a Western. So yeah, that's an, that's a not X rated. Nope. Not going to put that kind of, I got enough drama already in my head besides taking on everyone else's X rated drama. So yeah, <laughs> I don't have a lot of X rated drama in my life. I guess I should 
clarify there. All right, why young adult? Um, I do enjoy some young adult now and then if I'm in the mood. To me, that's one of those kitschy reads. That's one of those beach reads that I'm just going to kind of reread, throw away, and not think about, just check out um, young adult fiction. I haven't found anything super deep that I have enjoyed there. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not hot, but it's not not. It's just kind of whatever. And then the last one is the zeitgeist, uh, which basically means kind of like the spirit of an era. And yes, I do um, like these sort of, you know, reading about particularly specific eras in particularly specific places. I love reading about like old New York, like time and again, that there's a time and again, and then there's a sequel to that by Jack Finney. I love those books so much. Um, all about old New York and the history there and just the feeling, just the, and I think, you know, and things like Gatsby or whatever, like I think I would even grasp all that so much more if I was familiar, had ever even been to New York. I'm not a New Yorker. I don't know any New Yorkers and I've never been there. And I'm not even familiar with, I've never even been to New England. So I just, uh, I can't relate at all, but I love reading about it. I love reading about, you know, the people who um, went on the Titanic and came off the Titanic and just how that whole came down. I love reading about immigrants who have just entered into New York and, you know, all that. Love it. All right. Um, I love reading about Regency, Victorian, Edwardian. They all have their own little spirit of the era. And, uh, and it's a different feeling for each one of those. And so a uh, World's Fair is, that's another one. And I know that World's Fair is sort of like, um, you know, traver traverse, is that a good word? <laughs> the different eras, of course, but just that feeling of it. Um, and especially, you know, like the Chicago World's Fair. I love reading about, you know, the Victorian times, um, World's Fairs. So good. All right, I got through the list obnoxiously, but I did it. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Consider yourself tagged, like I said, and I will tag a few of you down in the comments. Um, I'm gonna look for some people that uh, I haven't tagged before in other stuff, but I love to be tagged in videos. So if you do a tag and you wanna tag somebody, tag me, I will do it. Hopefully not three months late. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.